For our analysis on the bank collapse, I'm joined now by John Quelch. He's the dean of the Miami Herbert Business School at the University of Miami. First, I want to get your reaction to where things stand right now. And we know that President Biden did speak earlier today with reassurances that the U.S. banking system is safe. Is it safe? And how much government intervention could we see? Uh, first of all, it is safe. Um, and uh, the president uh, has to come forward um, and say so, uh, because any uh, run on additional banks as a result of depositors feeling as though their savings and deposits are unsafe uh, could result in further contagion. Um, I believe that over the weekend, the uh, FDIC, the federal government uh, agencies, uh, acted uh, sensibly and efficiently uh, to take over uh, the second bank that you mentioned and to come out unequivocally indicating that all deposits uh, in the uh, SVB, uh, as well as in this uh, second bank signature, uh, would be covered by uh, federal insurance. Um, this is an important point for your uh, viewers, that a particular account in a U.S. bank uh, can be insured uh, by the full faith of the federal government up to $250,000 worth of deposits. In the case of SVB and signature banks, the percentage of their deposits that were not insured, in other words, above this $250,000 threshold, uh, amounted to 85 to 90 percent of the deposits. Uh, most banks are at around about 50 percent. And this is where the vulnerability of these two banks came into play. And had the regulations uh, in 2018 under the Trump administration not been rolled back uh, from where they were previously, uh, these two banks would have been subject to higher levels of stress tests and uh, liquidity requirements that could have saved them from uh, going under. Dean Quelch, you mentioned the word contagion. That's something we've heard uh, the last few days. There are ripple effects, the signature bank failure, as you mentioned, but we're also seeing other regional banks, the stock market being impacted this morning, uh, some other impacts around the world. If things stay where they are right now, uh, what more can we expect? Um, it's possible that uh, a couple of other banks uh, that also have a high percentage of deposits over the $250,000 threshold, uh, an inordinately high percentage, and uh, uh, those banks have already been pummeled uh, in the stock market, uh, more so than regular uh, banks uh, of any size. Uh, it could be that those two or three banks also have to be rescued in a similar fashion, or rather, not the banks rescued, but the depositors. It's important to note that the shareholders of these banks uh, are totally uh, unprotected, uh, and that the, uh, the folks who have uh, debts owing by these banks, uh, other than depositors, are also unprotected. So uh, a, number of, uh, a number of investors are taking a hit, a uh, significant hit, regardless of uh, the federal uh, government stepping in to protect depositors. Uh, good points there. What could be the impact to the average person? What are you th seeing as the best and worst case scenarios? Uh, so what, what's important for the, uh, for the average consumer uh, is to make sure that they don't have more than $250,000 in a single account with a single bank uh, that's insured by the FDIC. Uh, there has been some um, discussion about raising the $250,000 to uh, $500,000. Um, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think what's going to happen is that uh, consumers are going to have to be prudent and spread their money around several banks. Uh, that may be a little bit inconvenient but in the spirit of uh, protecting their assets, uh, that would be the intelligent thing to do. 
All right, Dean John Quelch, thank you so much for joining us from the University of Miami. Appreciate